Welcome to the course Environmental Impact Assessment. Continuing with our exploration to review the status of the global environment, today we will cover biodiversity. We will follow chapter 6 of Global Environment Outlook 6 which focuses on healthy planet and healthy people. So accordingly our coverage will include meaning of biodiversity, we will look at the problems associated with biodiversity like sixth mass extinction, its significance, benefits and concept of one health. We will review the interconnections between people, biodiversity and health and provisions of ecosystems. We will look at the key impactful pressures on biodiversity, thereafter we will review impacts on the world's biomes. So accordingly, what you will be able to do is to explain biodiversity, explain and review problems associated with biodiversity like sixth mass extension, its significance, benefits and concept of One Health, synthesize the interconnections between people, biodiversity, ecosystem, health and provisions of ecosystems and eventually connect these to understand environmental impact assessment. You should be able to identify the key pressures on biodiversity and review various impact predictions, identify the various world's biomes and discuss the impacts on them as well as review the nature and intensity of environmental impact. Let us first understand what biodiversity means. Biodiversity is the richness and variety of life we see on earth. Biodiversity relates to variability. Variability, the variety we see among living organisms from all sources, the diversity within species, between species and of ecosystems. We see that biodiversity is said to be the health of ecosystem which allows for stability and recovery. It is said to be the most complex and important feature of our planet. Without biodiversity, life will not sustain. When we consider diversity, we ask how many different species are present in a given area. We look at amount of inherited genetic variability contained within populations of species. Survival of species is dependent on genes that provide resistance to disease and environmental tolerance. This can be significantly affected by the destruction of habitats and other influences what we have been doing. We also look at ecosystem diversity like variety of communities or habitats that exist. Now let's investigate the problems associated with biodiversity. An important concern for us is that biodiversity is in crisis. There is well established evidence that indicates an irrevocable meaning permanent and continuing decline of genetic and species diversity. And this degradation of ecosystem is happening at local and global levels. Scientists are increasingly concerned that if anthropogenic, the human activities, pressures that are, our activities exert on biodiversity continue unrestricted, without limit we risk precipitating a sixth mass extinction event in the Earth's history. And this will have tremendous impacts on our health and equity. Here is a brief understanding of the sixth mass extension. The National History Museum says, extension is a part of life and animals and plants disappear all the time. About 98% of all organisms that have ever existed on our planet are now extinct. When a species goes extinct, its role in ecosystem is usually filled by new species or other existing ones. 
Earth's normal extinction rate is often assumed to be between 0.1 and 1 species per 10,000 species per 100 years. This is known as a background rate of extinction. A mass extinction, when we say mass extinction, event is when species vanish much faster than they are replaced. This is usually defined as about 75 percent of the world species being lost in a short amount of geological time, less than 2.8 million years. It is difficult to identify when a mass extinction may have started and ended. However, there are five big events that we know of where extinction was much higher than the normal background rate which we talked about and these are often used to decide whether we are going through a sixth one now. So, now we understand what the sixth mass extinction means. Subsequently, our understanding of biodiversity is much better today. We understand it much better in current scenario. Here are some points that report indicates. Rate of species loss is estimated to be a thousand fold greater than the background rates. That is what we see today. This is rising concerns and debates among scientists over whether we have already entered into a sixth mass extension event. For many species populations are in decline globally and genetic diversity, genetic diversity which is vital for future adaptation to global change is deteriorating. It is important for us to understand that biodiversity loss and habitat decline continue to accelerate. So, it is accelerating, the decline is accelerating, this decline is at a greater speed and is believed to be beyond the planetary boundaries. The loss of biodiversity reduces ecosystem resilience, the ability to get back to normal. Furthermore, the loss increases vulnerability to threats including negative impacts of climate change. The genetic diversity we see is vital raw material which allows adaptation to these changes. So, if we lose that, the adapt we will also lose the ability to adapt. As per the report, natural communities of plants and animals are being reshaped because of climate change and our activities which has caused movement of species. We also see that some displaced species are invasive, aggressive and they pose risks to not only to our health, but also the genetic diversity and food and water security. So, you see how significant they are in our life. Such changes are said to reduce the efficiency of ecosystems. Ecosystem will not efficiently capture essential resources, it will not produce biomass, will not decompose and recycle nutrients and it will also decrease in resilience. We see that there is increase in the rate of species population decline globally across all earth's major biomes um, and this is well established through various studies. The report also highlights that at a local level indigenous people and local communities play a key role in protecting biodiversity. And if we do not take action, it will be very expensive for us. Moving on, let us look at the benefits of biodiversity. It is well established that biodiversity provides many valuable goods and services to us. This variability, the variety we talked about, helps to regulate climate through carbon removal and control of local rainfall filters air and water and mitigates the impact of natural disasters such as landslides and coastal storms. So, it also even protects us. Direct benefits from biodiversity include food and fibers from natural vegetations, wood and non-wood products from forest, fish and oceans and freshwater systems, 
pollination of crops, medicines from plants and even psychological health. If we restore and maintain biodiversity, we will be able to enhance adaptive potential of our earth and help sustain na nature's contribution for our livelihoods, health and well-being. The report also suggests that loss of biodiversity is a significant equity issue. So, as explained, the livelihoods of 70 percent of people living in poverty rely to some extent on natural resources. If we damage these resources, we put the livelihoods of many at risk. Furthermore, the report assesses that 80 percent of global biodiversity is found in traditional territories of indigenous people and stresses that the future generations of these indigenous people will experience relatively impoverished poor lives if losses continue to happen. So, you see how, how, how big the problem is. The report indicates that the pressure on biodiversity continues to increase, there is loss of habitat, degradation because of agriculture and infrastructure development. Then there are over exploitation and pollution, we also see invasive alien species and now we are experiencing climate disruption. Furthermore, these changes are interacting between themselves and causing further change. So, all the changes which we are seeing, they are also interacting between themselves. We have noted and continued to substantially ongoing losses of populations, species and habitats. Let us try to understand the concept of One Health. The report states, One Health is an approach that recognizes the opportunities and challenges related to these interconnections at the human animal ecosystem interface and aims for optimal health outcomes for all. It is particularly relevant in the prevention and control of zoonosis which account for more than 60 percent of human infectious disease. Several aspects such as urbanization, agricultural practices, land use and biodiversity are changing the ecological dynamics and these changes are also in some cases facilitating human animal conflict and these changes are also in some cases facilitating human animal contact that worsens the risk of zoonotic disease emergence and spread. For example, COVID-19 which we are experiencing now, zoonotic diseases are transmissible from domestic or wild animals to humans through direct contact or through water, food and the environment. All these aspects of the study was published in 2019 which makes a very strong case for the reflection what we are going through at this moment. Consider the drivers of environmental change. We have already seen that these drivers include population, demography, urbanization, economic development, technology and innovation and climate change. These have caused several negative impacts on biodiversity which in turn have led to loss of genetic diversity which is important for their survival and arrest population decline. And because of these changes, some of these species will disappear. Furthermore, such changes are also leading to reshaping of natural communities while creating concerns for stability and functioning of ecosystems. Let us try to understand interconnections between people, biodiversity, ecosystem health and provisions of ecosystem through this image by World Wide Fund for Nature. In the figure, we see that our population associated consumptions and resources use pattern trigger the indirect drivers such as agriculture and forestry, fishing and hunting, urbanization and industrial development, use of water, energy and required transportation. 
which create direct pressure on biodiversity and ecosystem as seen in the third row in dark green color. The direct pressure indicated include habitat loss, changes and fragmentation in the habitat, over exploitation of resources, occurrence of invasive species, pollution and climate change from our activities. These pressures change the state of global biodiversity shown fourth row in pink color. Changes as indicated include terrestrial change, change in freshwater quality and quantity and marine biodiversity. In the bottom most row we see the services benefits we get from ecosystem. The service include provisioning service like food, medicine, timber, fiber, bioenergy, regulating services like water filtration, waste decomposition, climate regulation, crop pollination, regulation of some human diseases and we also see supporting services like nutrient cycling, photosynthesis and so on. Then we also see cultural services like enriching recreational aesthetic and even spiritual. Also reflect that as it is predicted that the population will increase and urbanization will increase. Most of the drivers will increase, they, they are going to further uh, create more pressure. And it is predicted that climate change will become the dominant driver of biodiversity change in the next few decades. Ultimately, reducing pressures on biodiversity will require addressing these drivers of change. Now, let us look at the pressures. The main direct pressure on global biodiversity are habitat stress and land use change, invasive species, pollution, unsustainable use, over exploitation and climate change. Mainly as a consequence of higher temperatures, change in precipitation pattern and increasing frequency and severity of extreme weather event and wildfires. The spatial distribution and combination of these pressures varies across the globe as you may see in the figure which shows the global distribution of the threat um, in red zone showing very high threat intensity and orange showing high threat intensity and so on. You may look at our country to identify the threat level as per the study given here. In the following graph, you may see the proportion of critically endangered, endangered and vulnerable under mammals, birds and amphibians due to land use change and habitat loss which constitute the major portion shown in dark green color. You may see invasive species in lighter shade of green and further pollution. You may further see that over exploitation shown in black color is another major reason for threats followed by atmospheric warming and extreme events shown in gray. Looking at the first point pressures, land use change and habitat loss. Land use change which means what changes we make to the existing land cover to put into use to meet our growing requirements such as for residential purpose, uh, in particular we are seeing a, in the urbanization process, industrial purposes, infrastructure purposes, mining for agriculture purposes is increasing drastically. Therefore, the associated global human footprints like how much we are really consuming, our footprints are increasing, assessing into the natural areas. Leading to because of this we are causing desertification, deforestation and also causing loss of habitat. So continue to think about the environmental impact our activities have. We see that land use changes impact both aquatic and terrestrial environments with exposure to pollution, exhaustic pathogens and emerging infectious diseases harmful to humans livestock and wildlife and uh, we also see increased human conflict. 
As you can see in the figure, which shows the global human footprint for 2009 based on the combined pressure of infrastructure, land cover and human access into natural areas in the scale from 0 to 50. 50 you may see indicated in red colors. You may look at India and reflect on color. Likewise, pay attention to the other warm color zones in the map. In the following map, you can see the absolute change in average human footprint from 1993 to 2009 at the ecoregion scale. The zones indicated in red color show the change in the negative directions and these areas the human footprint change is highly degraded. In orange color, you may see the changes again in the negative side and shows that it is degraded. The zone colored in green show improvement areas. You may pay attention to footprint change in India as per the study given here. So through these figures, you may reflect upon how much we are changing and accessing into the natural areas. Let us look at the second number of pressure identified invasive species. The report suggests that in developing countries, due to inadequate planning, often the development coincides with biodiversity hotspots, so we end up interfering with that. Also, it is suggested that the road construction assist the spread of invasive species and allow for easier access into previously intact habitat, exposing the species to threats from hunting and resource exploitation. Invasive species threaten ecosystems, habitats and other species. They are usually non-native. Um, like uh, invasive alien species, but can also include expanding native species that when they go beyond their proportion. Looking at the ecological impact of invasive species, it is said that they have direct and indirect competition suggest predation that is preying of one animal on others, the action of attacking or plundering. Studies suggest habitat degradation indicate hybridization um, which, which is the process of an animal or plant breeding with another individual, another species or variety. Further importantly what we see now which is the which is threat on human health and food security their role as disease agents and vectors. It is also indicated that the invasion of plants can impact the provisioning of key ecosystem services which we have already seen. You can uh, see reflect the diagram here and look at all the ecosystem services we had discussed about so that is all being in impacted. We also see that invertebrate species which are animal without backbone that have become invasive may pose an even greater risk. The population expansion uh, example which we are seeing here of invasive zebra muzzle in the North American Great Lakes was so great that it impeded water flow of municipal water supplies and hydroelectric companies. The danger is particularly high on islands because of invertebrate species. They can cause biodiversity loss to great extent. Uh, I have also uh, linked the YouTube video here for your uh, further detailed understanding if you wish to see. Invasive pests such as gypsy moth in North America as we can see here in the picture has impact on biodiversity and economy. Likewise, we see another invasive species emerald ash borer in North America impacting biodiversity and economy. It was introduced in US, you see how things happen. Uh, it was introduced in US in 2002. It arrived accidentally in cargo imported from Asia. Impact of this as recorded by National Invasive Species Information Center US Department of Agriculture show that ash trees lose most of their canopy within two years of infection. So, it just take two years and die within three to four years. So, that, that range of the, 
damage can happen. Yet another recorded by National Invasive Species Information Center, um, again the U.S. Department of Agriculture show hemlock woody adelgid in North America impacting the biodiversity and economy. It is native to Japan. This was also introduced by accident, destroys eastern hemlock trees. You may also see the YouTube video to learn more, link provided in the suggested read and watch. It is also suggested that the invasive insect vectors can also facilitate the spread of parasites and lead to infectious diseases. You are very much familiar with chikungunya, dengue and zika which are vectored by mosquitoes. We also see unsustainable uses and overexploitation because of construction of dams, mines and other hard as well as energy infrastructure developments which we are going to constantly review in our environmental impact assessment. Furthermore, the climate warming and the increasing frequency of extreme weather events, we see these days like very hot summer, heavy rain causing flood, season of scares, rainfall causing drought and we also see forest fires. All of these contribute to habitat loss and degradation of already stressed habitats. Because of the increased temperature, the seas are getting warmer which we have already seen and that is reducing the sea ice extent. The reduction is affecting the critical hunting habitat for polar bears, seals and fishing birds um, as per the intergovernmental panel on climate change IPCC report we see. Also we see increased atmospheric carbon dioxide and acidification of ocean habitats. We further see that the loss of habitat of wild species affect the ecosystem services mostly they provide as we have seen pollinators and predators of agriculture pest. Report also notes the loss of human access to late nature in particular it largely impacts the indigenous communities that so no more they are able to access nature that's that's been uh, obstructed. The economic cost both direct and indirect such as cost of efforts to control them can be of the range of many billions of dollars annually and uh, major routes for species invasive include deliberate release, escape, accidental introduction as you have already seen it could be tourism and uh, ship blast water as uh, we had seen, uh, wherever loss of native biodiversity happens it is likely to make it vulnerable to the invas invasion risk. So you reflect upon the nature of changes we make around and how it eventually impacts us. Moving forward we will look at another element which causes pressure that is pollution. Pollution happens in many forms such as waste and chemical products deliberately or accidentally released into the environment. Pollution in form of light, noise, heat, microbes. Major emitter of pollution includes transport, industry, agriculture, aquaculture. So, we see all these. There are wide range of pollutants. Uh, the increasing pollutants includes uh, synthetic chemicals, pesticides, cosmetics and so on. You may think of the stuff you use regularly. Pollution also happens through open waste dump on land which has local impacts on plants and animals. Land soil pollution also leads to impacting the microbial that is bacteria population and hampers the important ecosystem functioning. There are increasing problem of bioaccumulation of toxins including heavy metals which may have multiplying impacts across the entire food chain including impact uh, on us. Probably problem of water pollution including marine and freshwater environment we see increasing problem of plastics, chemicals which threatens the wildlife. 
We are also witnessing air pollution that contributes to the acidification, also eutrophication of terrestrial ecosystems, lakes, estuaries and coastal waters and to mercury bioaccumulation in aquatic food webs, aquatic food webs. We also witness another pressure from overexploitation, which includes illegal, unreported and unregulated activities such as fishing, logging and so on. We see that the direct exploitation has resulted in threats to both land and marine species. The overexploitation of wildlife has implications for equity. As suggested, it deprives poor and vulnerable local communities and indigenous people who are dependent on them for sustenance, traditional medicines, tourist income and other ecosystem benefits. So we see how our activities, over exploitation of the resources and impact of biodiversity and diverse and vulnerable communities. So we see how our activities, over exploitation of the resources, impact biodiversity and how uh, impact biodiversity and also the vulnerable communities. Now we will look at another driver, climate warming and extreme events creating pressure on biodiversity. The impacts of anthropogenic climate change on biodiversity are most evident in natural systems. The report suggests that up to one in six species could be threatened with extinction by 2050 if current warming trend continues. In the figure, you may see number of species vulnerable to climate change. The darker shades indicate high number of vulnerable species both in land and marine. The darker shade indicate high value as 100 species. We may reflect on the danger we see, however, known impacts are not distributed evenly and our knowledge of impacts remain incomplete at this moment. It is suggested that in response to rising temperatures, species may move to cooler locations or alter their phenology to flower, breed or migrate sooner. Evidence suggests that they are doing both. They are moving up, changing places as well as uh, there's changes in the phenology to flower. Now let us look at another uh, extreme events. The natural disasters such as earthquake and tsunami or flood landslides, wildfires, uh, wildfires and droughts, following extreme weather events kill and injure hundreds of thousands of people a year, cause widespread destruction to ecological habitat and threatens wildlife pollution with local extinction. So they are also creating loss. We further see marine environment because of the warming and acidification uh, there is uh, loss happening which we will see further in detail. So we have seen the different drivers which create pressures on biodiversity and range of impacts direct and indirect we have seen them here briefly touched upon. Now we look at the global state and trend of biodiversity. Global change what we are witnessing is having negative impact across all dimensions of biodiversity which we discussed. The changes are happening from genes to ecosystems. However, we are yet not able to measure the genetic diversity, we are not aware. Uh, further population baseline data is also limited. Moreover, the status of ecosystem is under evaluated. So we should see this keeping all this in perspective. So when we uh, review this, you should be conscious about this. Looking at the state and trends in genetic diversity, genetic diversity is important. It is raw material for continuing adaptation of wild species by natural selection. It also helps in maintaining and enhancing the diversity of cultivated plants and breeds of livestock. This eventually helps in resilience of agriculture system and food security. Uh, we are witnessing long term decline in the number of varieties of crops and breeds of livestock. There is decline of biodiversity at the global level, so we have been repeating that. 
According to the International Union for Conservation and Nature IUCN latest estimates in the figure you can see the red list of threatened species, the green color bar zone you can see critically endangered species you may note highest being cycad second from the bottom you may see vulnerable in black color bar you may see sixth from the bottom the reef forming coral are identified as vulnerable. In the figure showing the living planet index you can see the decline from 1970 to 2014 because of the anthropogenic land use change. So, you can see the decline here. In the figure showing the biodiversity intactness index you can see the spread of the decline and vulnerability of the species due to anthropogenic land use change in the last 44 years. Look at the overall color distribution across the globe and also look at the colors in our country. Study also indicates decrease in vegetation productivity between 2000 and 2013 because of anthropogenic factors. A study also indicate that 24 percent of terrestrial ecoregions are under danger. In the figure you can see that the land cover change in broad habitat such as mangrove, tropical, subtropical coniferous forest and also change in their productivity. Note the percentage change and change in productivity. Study also indicate an average decline in natural wetland area about 30 percent between 1970 and 2008. There has been increasing impact on marine ecosystems due to anthropogenic activities. Many of these ecosystem processes are thought to be under threat as a consequence of observed wildlife decline and ongoing threats to biodiversity. Mammals, bird, amphibian species that are used for food or medicines are at greater risk of extinction. So, we saw the state of biodiversity and how it is declining rapidly at different scale and many of the processes we are unaware of. We will now look at the impacts on the world's biomes. Let us first see what biomes are. Biomes are defined as a major ecological community of organism adopted to a particular climatic or environmental condition across a large geographical area. Within biomes several ecosystems may coexist, you may see a lot of things. Here we uh, see eight broadly defined biomes that encompass most of the earth's biodiversity so that we are aware of different range variety we have. First we see ocean and coast as per the report the primary pressure on open ocean biodiversity are over exploitation, pollution from land based activities and climate change. Um, report uh, suggests that coastal ecosystems have additional pressure associated with habitat destruction, aquaculture and invasive species. Coastal systems are said to be particularly vulnerable. For example, between 20 and 35 percent of mangrove areas have been lost since 1980, that is a big loss. And the current annual rate of seagrass habitat destruction is about 8 percent. Coral reefs are among the most biodiverse marine ecosystems, they are most vulnerable. And under increasing decline, all these decline is eventually affecting us. Second we see fresh water systems, fresh water system are exposed to multiple pressures because of land use change, habitat loss, invasive species, use of water courses for development and hydroelectric power and pollution, we are creating widespread and significant impact. Fresh water vertebrate species decline at a massive scale, report record average 81 percent over the past 42 years, that is huge. Six groups of global freshwater fauna assessed are in extinction risk as seen in the figure amphibians, mammals, reptiles and so on. About third of the more than 7000 freshwater invertebrate species on the IUCN red list are considered threatened that is that is big number we are looking at. These species combine to provide a wide range of critical services for humans such as flood protection, food, water, filtration and carbon sequestration, so they are important for us. Now let us see the grassland 
As per IUCN report, grasslands cover about 8 percent of the total land area and were once home to some of the largest wildlife collections on earth. They have now drastically changed and are now endangered ecosystem. They are facing multiple pressure including land use change, overgrazing, fragmentation meaning that there has been disrupted invasive species, suppression of natural fire, climate change and afforestation. Currently 4.5 percent of global grasslands have protected status. So, there is a lot of dependency of small and uh, small scale economic activities on grassland and degradation to such uh, areas impact livelihoods of many. Now, let us look at the agricultural landscape. Agricultural expansion since thousands of years had led to biodiversity loss in many biomes. However, we also see that uh, there are landscape transformation and fragmentation of natural habitat. It is also non-cropped areas, water courses and air quality. There has been drastic decline in the animal population negatively impacting agricultural livelihoods. However, some of the agriculture practices such as uh, crop combinations and applications of fertilizers and pesticides also impact on below ground biodiversity. The report also emphasizes that it is important to maintain the agricultural landscape as agriculture can sometimes maintain rare species in semi natural habitats. So, even that is important. Now, let us look at the dry land. Dry lands are said to be less diverse than other ecosystems, however they contain thousands of species that are highly adapted to the dry land environment. Dry land species are highly resilient and recover quickly from drought, from drought, fire and herbivore pressure. We are witnessing worldwide desertification which is also known as land degradation in dry lands. Dry land degradation has many causes including human conflicts. We see that large amount of waste, garbage and toxic material were dumped and burnt in the desert ecosystem due to war, um, drought, overgrazing, overuse of groundwater and unsustainable agriculture practices also impose extra pressure on the dry land. There are numerous impact of degradation of semi-arid and arid landscapes such as availability of fresh water, food production, um, also affects the species and genetic resources. Because of desertification we witness impact on soil health and vegetation which eventually affects us. Salinization also happens which is a major problem in this biomes. Let us now see forest. We all know that forests provide habitat for large numbers of animals and plant species, contribute range of ecosystem services, provide essential regulation services and we have seen all this. Deforestation and forest degradation is happening at a large scale and it is increasing, ca increasingly causing threats to species diversity. And this is all happening due to demands of biomass, urban expansion, agriculture, energy, mining and transportation development. So, when we do EIA you look at all these aspects. If deforestation and degradation continue the forest can convert to source of carbon itself. There will be loss of livelihood, there are direct health consequences of deforestation ranging from physical and mental well-being. Forest loss increases exposure to infectious disease including malaria and other vector borne parasites. Let us now look at mountains. The report indicate that the mountain range covers around 22 percent of the terrestrial space of planet and provide multiple ecosystem services. Mountain habitats at lower elevation are more biodiverse. We observe habitat degradation and fragmentation and it has impacted many mountain ecosystems. We may note that the mountain ecosystems are especially vulnerable to climate change. The recorded impacts include shift in species ranges and composition. Climate induced warming can change ecosystem functioning. 
In the figure given, you may see ecosystem function that mountain provide with warm color showing high value of the services. In the following image, you can see the pollution density indicating the demand on the ecosystem service. In the following image, you can see the contrast of the supply and demand of ecosystem placed side by side. Look at India. As per the analysis, the supply is low and the demand is high. As per the report, most mountain areas today are under human pressure, including the tropical ants and Central Asian mountain biodiversity hotspots. The Himalayas, uh, with approximately 19,000 species, have been documented as highly vulnerable to climate change. Looking at the impact of the loss of biodiversity and degradation of mountains, it will lead to reduced natural contribution to people in both mountains and lowlands, will result in changes in air quality and climate regulation. For example, less greenhouse gas will be controlled. It will cause loss of food security, medicinal plants and water quality and provision and increased exposure to risk associated with landslide, sedimentation of rivers and flooding modifying their livelihoods and land cover to the local communities. Glacier loss also impacts water security. Many of our population particularly in South Asian countries depend upon the flow of river from the Himalayas. Let us now look at the polar region. Polar region act as a sink for many anthropogenic pollutants. The report shows that the biodiversity in Arctic and Antarctic region is under particular stress. There is decline in many native species. There is increase in temperature and invasive species, especially in the sub-Antarctic and Antarctic Peninsula are major pressures. Industrial development, pollution, local disturbances present extra pressure. Many studies indicate that Arctic will be ice free in summer by 2050. The loss of sea ice will create major ecological shifts uh, and its impact can be several. And we also see there is decline in penguin population in Antarctica. So we see how diverse our biodiversity is and how it is under threat and what changes our activities are causing. To summarize today's session, so today we looked at the meaning of biodiversity. We reviewed the problems associated with the biodiversity like the sixth mass extension, its significance, benefit and concept of one health. We looked at the interconnections between uh, people, biodiversity, ecosystem, health and provisions of ecosystems and eventually um, I, uh, uh, you are required to connect these while assessing environmental impact. We identified the key pressures on biodiversity and through this understanding you should be able to predict various impacts. In today's session we identified various world's biomes and discussed impact on them and you should alongside be may review the nature and intensity of environmental impact, what we choose to assess and what we do not choose to assess. These were the references used for this particular session. Our coverage has been limited as per the scope of the subject. Additional resources to read and watch are provided to you. Please feel free to ask questions. Let us know about your any concerns you have. Do share your opinions, experiences and suggestions. Looking forward to interacting and co-learning with you in our discourse of EIA. Thank you.